Okay, so let's continue. Now we've looked a little tiny bit at Seaside and the programming in Seaside. Let's look at something else for a minute. Let's go back to our browse page. We see we have a huge list. Let's go to Peer. Peer is a content management system. You can have a blog. In fact, you can also have, if you log in, default username, admin, default password, peer. You can change things to a book format, an events format, and the default. So rather than change these, I'll just let you see what a good book looks like. Because in fact, the Seaside book, Dynamic Web Development with Seaside, at book.seaside.st slash book, is written in peer. You have a table of contents. And notice that at the bottom of each page, you can add a note. So that you it's basically a wiki for a book. Now the neat thing about Peer is the wiki markup will produce HTML. You can also redirect the wiki markup to PDF or to PostScript. And if you want to write a translator to, translator to LaTeX, you could write one also. And if you knew of some other file format that you wanted, you could write a translator for that also. And the wiki markup would automatically be redirected to that if you so selected. So let's go back to my local page. And we are going to, we are logged in. So now we're going to go down a little bit and show you something a little bit more interesting than just wiki markup, because most of you have used a wiki. But you ain't use this kind of wiki. Recall that we were using a little thing called component or counter. So let's add something. Not a page, a component. We're going to call it counter. We're going to add and select at the very bottom where you can't see it. A counter. And sure enough, there it is. And if you look, there's our counter. Well, that's nice. But let's go back up to our blog or even to the welcome page. Let's add a page below the welcome page and call it my page. Let's edit this page. Well, In fact, I forgot the syntax. So let's save it. Go back a little ways to um, Welcome to Peer. Edit that page and grab. This is called a link. You'll see what it does in a second. Go back to my page. Edit. And paste this link in. But instead of Go, linking to design chooser, we're going to link to counter. And in fact, now my page contains a copy of the counter object. In fact, if we wanted, we could act a second copy of the counter object. Notice they are completely independent. Cool. Well, it gets better or worse, depending on your point of view. Let's go back to the system page, two components, and add a new component. Add component. We'll call it factorial1. And again, at the very bottom where you can't see it, I have a component I've written called seventh test component. Its title is now factorial one. 
we save it, go back to our original page, my page, edit my page, and instead of having a counter, let's put factorial 1 and get rid of the other one. And now, you notice we have this nice form. What does this form do? Well, enter a value here, 100. We now have 100 factorial equals that. It's actually sending a message back to the server to perform 100 factorial. In fact, I have some error checking and quality checking in there, so the maximum number it will handle is 999 factorial. If I put it at 1,000 factorial, it says 1,000 is too big. If I put it at negative 1 factorial, it says negative 1 cannot handle the factorial call. Let's try text. text cannot handle the factorial call. So, you see, I wrote something in Squeak that I was able to load as a markup into my wiki, or into the book page, or into the event page, depending on which one you're using. I told you it wasn't like a normal wiki. In our next lesson, we'll see how to write our own component to imitates at least a little bit of this factorial.